Good evening, I'm Camilo Martinez. Our top stories. The second chancellor of the university passes away. The new Green Dragon rare breed and the Eco Center. Local officials work to gain votes. Wednesday saw the funeral of Baroness Thatcher and St. Paul's Cathedral in London. The first woman to become Prime Minister of the United Kingdom later became the second Chancellor of the University of Buckingham. Serving in that post from 1992 to 1998, the flag at the university has been flying at half mass since her death nearly two weeks ago. Baroness Thatcher left instructions that the Chancellor and Vice-Chancellor of the University of Buckingham, together with two alumni, be invited to the event. As in Plan May has the airport. From the early hours of the morning, crowds began to gather along the route to pay their respects to the woman who many believe was Britain's greatest peacetime Prime Minister. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh led some 2,000 mourners from 370 countries in the biggest ceremonial funeral in the capital since that of the Queen Mother in 2002. Among them were Professor Terence Keeley, the Vice-Chancellor, and Lord Tanlaw, the Chancellor. Accompanying them were alumni Daniel Bakpa, SC President in 2009 and now a lawyer, and Flora Fairbairn who graduated in Art History 1995. What Baroness Thatcher meant to the country was clear from the crowds, but what did she mean to the university? Well, she meant everything because she supported us when we had very few, if any, supporters when she was Shadow Minister of Education. And she's kept her faith with the, uh, the founders, the management, and the university itself all these years. She was absolutely central to the university. Um, she uh, opened the first building. She, as Secretary of State and the Shadow Secretary of State, consistently expressed great support to the university. She made sure that when we needed a royal charter, there were no difficulties. And of course, she became our Chancellor and did all she could to support us. She could not have done more for us. The image of the forbidding Iron Lady that the public recognizes was at odds with the private woman. Well, I knew her a bit because in the 80s, when I was still at Cambridge, I used to be asked to brief her on a number of topics in education and science. She struck me as being really intellectually very, very forceful, very aggressive intellectually, but very nice as a person. And by the way, I found that she did have a sense of humor. I was quite surprised to be told that she didn't. She made at least one joke at my expense. I knew her quite well through Buckingham, and uh, uh, she's not at all what she set out to be as a, uh, an iron lady. She had great humanity, understanding, uh, and intelligence. Of course, there were protests at the funeral. Lady Thatcher thrived on confrontation. Um, the 1980s, along with the Reagan, which led to the current economic uh, crisis that we've got. It's tempting to wonder what she would have made of it. She should have loved it. She knew that she changed Britain. She knew that in every change there are losers. She knew that the losers on this occasion are people who deserve to lose. And the fact that all these years after she left office, people are still furious, meant what a good job she did. This is a scene plan me for Buckingham News. A new educational center is under development near Buckingham. Green Dragon Eco Center will teach both adults and children about the importance of being eco-friendly and about rare breeds that exist today which may be needed in the future. Tavi Molloy finds out more. Only a few miles outside of Buckingham lies Hogshaw Farm, where the Green Dragon Rare Breeds Farm and Eco Center will be erected over the next two years. According to project initiator Ray Mezik, the centre will offer a broad variety of activities for visitors of all ages, and although the main focus is on learning, having fun doing so isn't any less important. Uh, well, it's a place of learning first, and then fun second, so all sorts of people come here, children and adults as well. So they should learn food, care of animals, something to do with art, maybe even cookery lessons, and everything to do with eco-living. About 30 years ago, Mr. Mazek was inspired by the TV show Country Farm and started working on the Eco Centre, which will be home to a variety of rare breeds of all kinds. Well, the rare breeds I'm hoping to get is everything from a bee to a cow. And these rare breeds, are a, it's important that we keep them going. In case some animals um, get some sort of disease, we can go back to the old breeds and see if they've got an immunity for it. 
and find out why they've got the immunity and then bring that through. The first stage, hopefully we'll complete in, in the spring of next year, which would be 2014. We might complete all of it so it's open, so it's an educational site ready to go with the Eco Cafe. But it... Every aspect of the Eco Centre will be utterly reprocessed from old material, whether it's benches made from old bed frames to using windmills to pump water to the fields. It all comes full circle. The Green Dragon Eco Centre has only just hatched, but over the next few months it'll grow and develop into an eco friendly family attraction. This is Tabby Malloy for Buckingham News. The county council election hostings were held in the Radcliffe Centre this Wednesday. Charlie Williams went to speak to some of the candidates. Local voters are being given the chance to challenge, question and listen to candidates in the upcoming Bucks County Council elections. We came along to find out more. The event was overseen by local rector Will Pearson Gee and served as a platform to allow candidates to present themselves to voters whilst discussing community issues such as flooding, potholes, vandalism, care for the elderly and disabled, and local schools and education. We asked the candidates to summarise in a sentence or less why they deserve to be voted in rather than their rivals in the election, which takes place on May 2nd. I'm the only truly local man. I believe in Buckingham, I believe in the rural area. I could represent these people because I am one of the people who live here. I think I have... Um, depth of knowledge to be able to argue the case for Buckingham in various areas of Bucks County Council. I vote for the Liberal Democrats as a vote for the change in, in Buckingham that Buckingham needs to uh, progress for all the people in the north, especially in Buckingham. Because I support and will deliver things that people in Buckingham need. We had good education, low council tax, uh, efficient services delivered, and a very strong voice for North Bucks. I'll be able to delve into the facts and the figures and truly represent you without fear or prejudice because I have nothing to gain by towing any party line. So as all candidates pitch their cases and listen to the opinions of their constituency, Buckingham's voters will have to wait until May 2nd to take their pick. Charlie Williams, Buckingham News. <laughs> Macaroni Day? No. Marconi Day is tomorrow, a day which honors the inventor of the radio. Numuni Diallo finds out how relevant the radio is nowadays. The 20th of April 2013 sees the celebration of the work of Guglielmo Marconi and the role he played with the invention of the radio. The day allows amateur radio enthusiasts around the world to make contact with Marconi's sites using communication techniques similar to those used by the great man himself. How much do radio enthusiasts owe to Mark Cunny for his work into radio? So many other people and he made radio marketable and fashionable and you know, so we owe him a lot in terms of the modern day commercial radio. Roger Perkins has been working on setting up the university's first radio station. What will the radio station do for the university? A radio station for the university should provide, okay, first of all, practice for media students in one of the most creative media available. Um, secondly, it will build our profile because the radio station will be broadcasting via the web. When will the radio station be up and running for broadcast? Fingers crossed. Um, I hope to have the radio station up and running for summer term, though that depends on when various pieces of equipment arrive. This is Nimuni Diallo for Buckingham News. The current situation in North Korea is attracting a lot of media attention and is leaving some of us rather bemused. Ajerin Shardavikova has the story. Will he or won't he is a question on everyone's lips as Kim Jong-un threats of a missile launch remains high. How do the citizens of the neighboring country South Korea feel about the dictator's intimidations? South Korean student Sengok Han is studying here in the University of Buckingham and has offered to share his thoughts on the matter. Nobody in South Korea, or in Asia for that matter, actually believes that Kim Jong-un is going to launch a missile at Korea, Japan, or the United States. To do so would be a massive act of war and it would be a war that he would not be able to win. 
um, all these threats are just, uh, they can be kind of reference to kind of like a 14 year old on Xbox Live. He's just screaming obscenities at everybody else, just uh, profanities, obscenities, because he knows he's safe behind his little bedroom. Um, he's, he's, he, he's, he's safe because he's anonymous, and it's a bit like that with North Korea. So South Korea is, takes pity on North Korea because, you know, we, you know they're, they're, they're starving to death, they get two meals a day, they're being led by this fat 28-year-old kid. Um, so we really want to get rid of that regime. Tens of thousands gathered for the 101st anniversary uh, of Kim Il-sung, demonstrating their patrioti patriotism for their country and leadership. Will this patriotism continue if the government takes action? It comes to people retaining patriotism for North Korea. Um, when, when or if uh, Kim Jong-un carries out uh, an actual attack on South Korea. I think, yes, I think, I think North Koreans will retain their patriotism. As Sun Gong has confirmed, many South Koreans feel that the dictator is bored and there is no validity to his intimidations. Last week saw a lecture by celebrated editor Alexander Chancellor. Mr. Chancellor, former editor of The Spectator magazine, spoke on the future of journalism. The VC, no mean wordsmith himself, was glad to welcome an eminent editor who, though retired, was no mere spectator to the changes in journalism. Mr. Chancellor highlighted the difficulties of the trade, of how to get the story, but stay on the side of angels in pursuing it. I mean, you have to be devious if you're a reporter. It's a question of balancing is the deviousness dishonesty sometimes, justified by what you're trying to achieve. Does the decline in newspaper readership mean that journalism may not survive? Um, I think it, ha it, it has to survive. How it will survive, on what platform, or you know, whether it's on the internet or some other yet-to-be-invented thing, we don't know. Look around the law school and you will often see invitations to emote. For non-lawyers, it could be animal, vegetable, and mineral, but for wannabe barrister, it's a way of honing your courtroom skills ready for the important cases of tomorrow. And the law students of Buckingham are pretty good at it. Leandra Berrians took us behind the scenes. Last week, the law department held a moot for second-year law students to experience the atmosphere of a courtroom in the safety of Chandos Road. We went along to see what it was all about. Mooting is an important part of learning for those studying law. By simulating a courtroom, budding lawyers get a chance to debate about a fictional case in the proper style. Miss Mary Meek had voluntarily put herself forward for exorcism. The appellant, Mr. Dryden, believed that in the course of the exorcism, only reasonable force was used to carry out the act. We asked Dr. James Slater, who conducted the moot, some questions. What happens during a moot? A moot is essentially a competition uh, between two teams. Uh, there are normally uh, two members of each team and they argue uh, against each other in front of the judge uh, with regard to a, a point of law. Do you think mooting is important for those studying law? Uh, mooting um, uh, requires and, uh, and fosters a number of important skills for a lawyer, a number of presentation skills involving um, their demeanour, uh, how articulate they are in the spoken word and also to be honest, the importance of keeping your nerve under a certain amount of pressure. So yes, it's an important part of uh, legal education. How intensive is preparation for the moot? Though the final product is, is relatively brief in the sense that the argument is presented over a 15 minute period, there is a lot of work that goes behind being able to present that information uh, efficiently in that 15 minutes. So there's the evidence. The tradition of mooting is alive and well at the University of Buckingham. Leandra Behrens, Buckingham News. The University of Buckingham football team had two matches in the last week. Debbie Mackenzie James was there. After an astonishing 5-1 victory against Dean Sang Athletic, the university was away against Only Town in the battle for promotion from Division 1 to the Intermediate Division. Will McPhee was an early candidate for man of the match, opening the score in the 21st minute. Come on! Shannon Birchall then put Buckingham two ahead. Come on! Come on! But a crazy ending to the first half was about to come. An only shot crashed against the post and the rebound allowed the home team to score their first goal. 
A minute before the end of the first half, the game was at equalised at 2 all. However, the University returned to the second half with a victorious spirit, and at the 67th minute, Will McPhee scored a third. Nevertheless, Olney weren't dead yet, and in the 85th minute, they levelled the score at 3 all. Abandoning any fixed plan and playing with more passion than a proper strategy, Buckingham scored the winning goal at the last minute. An outstanding volley by Will McPhee gave victory to the University. Following the victory streak, the University of Buckingham FC was away to Marsh Gibbon, currently fourth in North Bucks Division 1. From the beginning to the end, the University's goal came under fire, and the goalkeeper, Govnair, became the most important player. Buckingham tried from a corner kick to make the first impact, but a weak header wasn't good enough to beat the home keeper. In the second half, a doubtful decision given by the referee allowed Marsh McGibbon to open the score. <laughs> the home team tried to extend the difference, but Govnair was there to stop any attempt. The post also played once and twice in favour of the university. A late rally from Buckingham wasn't enough to level the game, and the three points was lost to a rival that in no way showed superior skill. Cooking with Helen Thane shows us how to make a six minute sponge pudding. Hello and welcome to Cooking With. Today I'm going to be making a syrup jam sponge pudding in the microwave so it's quick, simple and done in about six minutes. Here I'm using uh, three tablespoons of jam. I'm just putting it in the bottom of a greased bowl which can be put in the microwave. Okay, first we start with creaming the margarine and the sugar together. This is what it should look like once the butter and the sugar is all creamed together. Once the butter and the sugars are mixed together, we can then add the egg and the flour. When you add the flour, only add a little bit of flour at a time. Don't put it all in at once. Okay, this is what your mixture should look like once it's all come together. Make sure it's nice and smooth because you don't want any lumps in your cake. Now, once it's all together, we can pop it over the jam. You've got to be careful with this bit. Make sure you pour it in nice and slowly and make sure you cover the whole of the jam because we don't really want any jam coming up um, when it's in the microwave. And just smooth it round covering all the jam. After you've covered all of the jam with the sponge mixture, pop it into the microwave on a high heat for between four and six minutes. Keep an eye on the mixture as it's cooking to make sure it doesn't flow over the top of the bowl. This is a super quick and yummy recipe for any student on the go. Thank you for watching. Have a good weekend.